In January, Russian flags were waved on the streets of the African nation Burkina Faso after the country's military leader overthrew the civilian government, with the military leader's supporters chanting, Viva Russia. They also held signs like this, which read, we demand cooperation with Russia. France, get out. A few months earlier, in neighboring Mali, supporters of a military coup there held pro-Russian signs featuring President Vladimir Putin's face. The takeovers are just some of the latest in a surge of military coups and attempted coups that have rocked Africa's Sahel region and unsettled global powers. If you take a look at this bar chart, you can see that Africa has experienced more coups in the past year than it has in decades. The head of the United Nations called it epidemic of coup d'etats. The insurrections have caused uncertainty and instability for the millions of people now living under military rule. But they've also had major international implications. Western partners like France and the US have withdrawn troops, training, and aid while Russian mercenaries have seized on the instability to make money and advance Moscow's interests in the region. Before we talk geopolitics, it's important to understand why these coups are happening in the first place. Many people in these countries are facing violence from Islamist groups linked to Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and Boko Haram. Not only have these groups been expanding their targets in recent years, but they've also been seizing valuable property and in some places, taking over local governments. 2021 was a particularly bad year. Violent incidents in the Sahel nearly doubled from the year before, and more than half of those incidents occurred in Burkina Faso. And in some places, citizens feel that France, the former colonial power, has not been a positive security partner. So what does the U.S. have to do with all of this? For years, American forces have sent aid and hosted training exercises to help African allies combat extremism. My colleague Michael Phillips has observed some of these programs. What are they training them to do? There are different uh, kinds of training to go on, but one that's particularly important involves U.S. Special Forces training commando units from those African nations. So it's sort of elite forces training other elite forces. This special forces training, known as Flintlock, is held in West Africa each year. But in recent months, some of the African militaries trained by the US have gone on to overthrow their civilian governments in coups. That includes the military leader who seized power in Burkina Faso. The insurrections haven't just alarmed American partners. They've actually triggered laws that forbid the US from providing assistance. Once the State Department declares that a coup has taken place, the U.S. can no longer provide military training, military equipment, uh, money, that sort of thing, to the militaries in those countries. What have American officials told you about this? American commanders will say, well, look, we're trying our best. We're teaching them what we think they should do. I think the U.S. military genuinely hopes these coups do not take place. But once they do, there's very little that can be done. And that's where Russia comes in. Russian guns for hire are filling the void in Africa as Western militaries pull back. They're making money, gaining mining concessions, and helping Moscow expand its influence through the sale of weapons and mercenary services. Much of this is done through the Wagner Group, a shadowy military company that employs former Russian soldiers. The Kremlin denies any formal ties with the Wagner Group, but Western officials say Wagner acts as a proxy force for the Russian Defense Ministry, and it's funded by this man, Yevgeny Prigozhin, an oligarch commonly referred to as Putin's chef. A team of researchers at the Center for Strategic and International Studies says this satellite image of a Wagner base and a Russian special forces base in Russia strongly suggests that the two share training facilities. Wagner has built other bases in countries where it operates, including the Central African Republic. And now these researchers say Wagner has built this suspected forward operating base in Mali right next to the Malian Air Force Base. Mali's military leaders hired the Wagner Group late last year to provide security, and Western officials say about 1,000 Russian mercenaries are now operating in the country. Ils arrivent au Mali avec des finalités prédatrices. Mais pourquoi? That has led to a falling out between Mali and France. And in February, France announced that it was withdrawing thousands of troops who have been in the country to fight extremism. Officials and analysts say these Wagner mercenaries are useful to the military leaders because they help them stay in power and they spread disinformation to influence public opinion. 
there's been a lot of rhetoric that Mali is actually liberating itself um, from, you know, the throes of French neocolonialism mm -hmm. by pursuing um, a closer partnership with Russia. Now, analysts fear that something similar could happen in Burkina Faso and other fragile African nations pushing the West farther away and allowing Russia an opening to exert its influence on the continent. So what about the millions of people now living under military rule in the Sahel? Their future looks far from certain. The resurgence of coup d'etats in our region is a matter of grave concern. Even though junta leaders look to Russia and the Wagner Group for security, Western officials insist that the Wagner Group makes countries poorer, weaker, and less secure. In some cases, the Wagner Group takes government money, natural resources, and strategic land, and it's been accused of massacres and other human rights abuses in Africa. Uh, they're a malign influence. They don't follow anybody's rules. They do what they want. They buttress dictators. Uh, they violate, uh, do, they do gross violations of human rights. Uh, I think it's bad for Africa's uh, security and prosperity in the future. To read more about Russia's activity in Africa, click the link I pinned below. And if you want to learn more about how Russia's actions in Ukraine have impacted NATO, check out this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.